Well, hey guys, Natalie Portman recently told Harper's Bazaar in an interview that going vegan changed her skin. In today's video, I'm going to be responding to this. I'm gonna be giving you my opinion on what she said and is going vegan the secret to radiant skin and well, looking like Natalie Portman. Once I became vegan, my skin got great. Are there any potential skin benefits from going vegan? Well, eliminating dairy may help in improving the appearance of acne for some people, but honestly, the association between dairy and acne, it's a little loosey-goosey. You guys may recall from my videos on dairy and acne and clear skin diet, that there is an association with skim milk consumption and more stubborn acne. It's thought perhaps it's dairy milk, that leads to an increase in something called insulin-like growth factor one, which directly causes more oil production in the skin from the sebaceous follicle, and that flares acne in people predisposed to acne. There are a number of studies that show this, but it doesn't seem to be true across the board for all people. It's likely something with your genetics, perhaps, that may make you more sensitive to something in the milk. We haven't quite figured it out. And to be clear, it's not dairy all in all. It is skim milk. That's where, that's where the, the data lies, and skim milk, seem to, skim milk seems to be the culprit. Aside from skim milk, processed sugary foods with a high glycemic load, likewise increased insulin line growth factor one that leads to more oil production in the skin. And high glycemic load foods also can increase uh, what's called advanced glycation end products. High glycemic load foods like processed sugary foods and smoked meats can increase what are called advanced glycation end products in the skin that damage collagen and lead to more prominent wrinkles. But to be clear, you can quote, go vegan and still eat high glycemic load non-animal foods and therefore not see any potential skin benefit. Or you may eliminate these things and still have acne because it is a complex disease with a lot of underlying factors. Your own hormones may be playing a role and simply making a diet switch may not make a difference. I have to say this article is a little vague too and that she doesn't really say what her skin problems were before and you know what the change exactly was. She doesn't detail it. She just says, got good. I'm curious what was wrong with her skin before going vegan and, and you know how, how it is better. That would have been some nice information. Does she have, is she overall less oily? Well, you know, she is getting wiser and with age, some of our hormones change and we make less oil. So that could be an explanation beyond just the change in her diet. Another skin benefit of going vegan, maybe depending on how you, how you build your diet is that you may start eating more whole fruits and vegetables, which are rich in fiber. Fiber has benefits for the gut microbiome. And in contrast to the standard American diet or the standard Western diet, which is very low in fiber, this dietary change, you know, it could make a difference for your skin and could reduce total body inflammation. There are some studies that show that people who follow a vegan diet, and I say that in air quotes for reasons I'll explain later, uh, do you have a lower CRP, C-reactive protein, which is a marker of inflammation? And so you may, you know, kind of experience some skin benefits in that sense. So, you know, it's possible. Not only that, you are consuming more antioxidants if you are incorporating more fruits and vegetables. And these things can help fight off oxidative stress in the skin that damages DNA in our skin cells. It leads to a premature wrinkling and destruction of collagen, all of those things. Your skin may be better equipped to handle the destruction that occurs upon exposure to UV rays. Of course, that is not a license to stop wearing sunscreen and just go out and tan, but consuming more fruits and vegetables can help to increase what's called the minimal erythematous dose of the skin. Basically, the dose of UV that will begin to damage your skin um, consuming more antioxidant rich fruits and vegetables and whole foods, whole plant-based foods can increase that. So you are less uh, vulnerable to UV damage. Okay, again, not a license to, not a license to get in the uh, tanning bed by any means or to go out and tan your skin. It is possible that some skin conditions may improve upon changing your diet to be compliant with the vegan lifestyle depending on how you change that diet. Um, but because studies do show that people who 
uh, incorporate a plant-based diet, do you have lower levels of what's called CRP? You can expect that if that's the case for you, then some inflammatory skin conditions like of course acne, which we've already talked about, rosacea, eczema, <clears throat> seborrheic dermatitis, you may notice some improvement in these conditions. But it's not all rainbows and butterflies when we're talking about changing your diet to be compliant with a vegan lifestyle. It depends on how you change the diet, of course. And if you are going to change your diet to be compliant with a vegan lifestyle or go plant-based, however you wanna label it, you do need to be aware of the fact that eliminating animal products from your diet requires you to take a B12 supplement, period. Uh, B12 is a vitamin that you cannot really get in a plant-based diet at all, and so it's necessary to supplement. If not executed properly, a vegan diet can put you at risk for certain micronutrient deficiencies. Some studies do show that vegans have poor for wound healing from cosmetic procedures, laser procedures. CO2 laser, for example, people who followed a vegan diet had took longer to recover from CO2 laser. And if you have a tattoo and you want it removed and you're on a vegan diet, it may take you longer and more sessions to get that tattoo off. Um, of course, these studies are not perfect. They're very small. They have biases and limitations. But don't just think that going on a vegan diet, whatever that entails for you, is going, to, is going to lead to crystal clear, perfect skin. Another study showed that people who follow a vegan diet, they have more wound diastasis and poor wound healing post uh, procedure. There are a number of small studies in the dermatology literature, again, small, and with their own sets of limitations and biases. But these small studies do suggest that people who follow a, you know, a diet compliant with the vegan lifestyle, they do have a little bit more of delayed healing from certain procedures, possibly due to less than optimal levels of certain micronutrients. That's not to say that you cannot get these micronutrients, things like zinc, iron, um, which are necessary for good healing. It's not to say that you cannot get them from a diet that is compliant with the vegan lifestyle, but it needs to be executed correctly. And you need to make sure that you are eating a variety and getting a good variety of whole grains, legumes, beans, beans are legumes, leafy greens, fruits and vegetables, healthy fats, etc. in your diet and not just relying on a few of your favorite foods. In that situation, you can easily become deficient in certain micronutrients. And it's not the kind of thing that you're going to feel necessarily the day of. It can be a gradual downtrending, something that your body may kind of get used to, but in the setting of a stress, an acute stress, like say for example, you're in a car accident and you have to go into the hospital. If these micronutrients aren't teed up, well, it actually could negatively influence your recovery in the hospital. Um, so that, that is always a concern that if you follow a diet compliant with the vegan lifestyle, you need to be aware of these limitations and make sure that you aren't um, you know, relying on a few of your favorites exclusively. Or if you have to have a major surgery, you you know you may have been trucking along with you know on the low end of say iron levels for a long time, not really necessarily feeling that poorly at all. But when you put your body through a stressful event like that, if you're not if your micronutrient stores are not teed up, so to speak, well then that could set you up for problems with healing as has been demonstrated in some of these studies in the dermatology literature. She claims she has better looking skin. Um, are vegans healthier as a whole? Honestly, that is a question that to be frank, we cannot answer. Why? Because no two vegans are alike and lifestyle factors influence health beyond just your diet. A lot of the studies that we have showing benefits in terms of consuming a vegan diet show benefits on cardiovascular risk factors. Things like LDL levels tend to be lower in people who follow a vegan diet, so to speak. Um, BMI tends to be lower. If you look at the literature on studies that examine vegan diets, there are a lot of limitations. I mean, that's gonna be the case with any diet. So you always have to be really critical when people present their impression of what the science says <laughs> because they will find ways to pick and choose articles that support their narrative. 
But regardless of what diet you are interested in, do be aware of the fact that dietary studies have a ton of, of limitations. Dietary studies are laden with so many limitations, recall bias. The studies that we have on people who have been on a vegan diet for most of their life, those studies often are for Seventh-day Adventists who, these, these are religious groups that follow a vegetarian or vegan diet, mostly. Not all of them do, but uh, the, ma the majority of them do. But they do, their lifestyle is more than their diet. They don't drink alcohol, they don't do drugs, they don't smoke, they exercise regularly, and they take, at least in the case of Seventh-day Adventists, they take what's called a Sabbath, basically a day off of work. They spend time um, in community. And these things all, independent of diet, have been shown to benefit a variety of health parameters, probably by lowering stress. The problem I have with this and with even many of the study, the research studies in the literature is the terminology vegan diet. There is no such thing as a vegan diet. Veganism is a lifestyle choice centered around minimizing as much as possible reliance on animals for you know, personal gain, if you will, to minimize harm to animals and animal cruelty, animal exploitation. It's not about making a food choice because of yourself, it's about making a food choice to minimize reliance on animal-based products. So you can, you can eat pretty close to a standard American diet as far as packaged foods and junk and be vegan. If your motivation is not to yourself, you can continue to eat poorly um, and you know subsist off of packaged junk. Is that gonna be good for you, your health long-term? No. And so I feel frustrated when people make these kinds of statements that going vegan changed their skin or you know, dissolved their arthritis or any kind of health claim. Because first of all, we simply don't have research to support that kind of, of claim. It's merely anecdote. And going vegan, I mean, is it, did, did those things happen because you stopped buying leather shoes? Did those things happen because you, you know, stopped going to a zoo? Um, you know, there are a variety of lifestyle choices that vegans make because they feel an intense ethical connection with animals and they're, you know, motivated to minimize uh, reliance on animal-based products. Um, so the diet, I mean, you can, you can, Oreos, uh, many people consider vegan, some don't because of palm oil, but many people do. And they, you know, you can, you can subsist off of that, call yourself, you know, you may be a vegan eating a vegan diet, but that is not a, a diet for health. I think we can all agree on that. What does Natalie Portman say she eats? I mean, she really didn't, she did not elaborate here at all. And of course it becomes the focus of the article because that's how these, media outlets do things. The celebrity makes one like, you know, comment to the side and before you know it, they're gonna dramatize it. Going vegan changed your skin. I doubt she even really said it like that. But anyways, she's like, some of my favorite foods are vegetable tacos, chips and guac, phyllo dough puff pastries, and oat milk cappuccinos. This sounds like we can just eat Chipotle and Starbucks and, and look like Natalie Portman based on what she told us. Chips and guac. Yeah, I mean, somebody who's impressionable may think that, you know, they can just eliminate animal foods in their diet and have all of these health benefits. But poorly executed um, diet that is compliant with a vegan lifestyle can actually be harmful to your health. So you, you need to make sure that you educate yourself on how to ensure that the diet that you are following gets you the micro and macronutrient profile that you need to. And you certainly can do that on a vegan diet, but you have to be, you have to be educated to do that properly. And there are a variety of good resources, but there are a lot of bad resources actually online on YouTube, for example. I mean, all these armchair dietitians that you run into, you know, they can easily mislead you. So, so be careful. Um, you know, I hate when people say, do your research because, you know, you can do your research in a vacuum online and get really poor information. 
Um, a registered dietitian can, can be a, a tremendous asset if you are considering changing to a, you know, a diet compliant with a vegan lifestyle, however that is sustainable to you. It may not, though, be necessarily the healthiest diet, depending on how, how you execute it. So, you know, whatever, this is Harper's Bazaar. It's not like, you know, the Lancet or anything. Speaking of which, though, where I really become frustrated is in these studies or case reports or things where they're like, vegan diet, vegan diet, and they do not elaborate on what the people in these studies are eating. Saying vegan diet is like saying a Costco diet. I am a member of Costco and I only buy things in bulk. You guys know I shop elsewhere, but say for example, you did a study and you called it the Costco diet. Well, if you've ever been in Costco, there are a variety of foods in there that you can choose from. And I mean, there are fruits, vegetables, and there are a ton of delicious, not so healthy treats that you can buy in bulk. Um, and you know, you so you could say, I'm putting people on a Costco diet. That is the same thing as saying, we are looking at people who are on a vegan diet. You have to define what the people are eating because vegan diet can mean a lot of things. Whole food plant-based, raw vegan, uh, what they call junk food vegan, where you you don't, you know, a lot more processed foods that are convenient. And just like it's not accurate to say that a vegan diet is good for your health, it's not accurate to say that an omnivorous diet is bad for your health. It is all in what the diet subsist, consists of. You can have an omnivorous diet that is rich in, in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, uh, you know, all of these healthy things, and you know, still having some animal-based proteins. There's no reason, there's no scientific evidence that that is harmful to human health. And in many cases, you could compare that to a diet, a, a vegan diet, if you will, a diet compliant with the vegan lifestyle that is, you know, Oreos, beyond sausages, and not, not much else. And well, honestly, in that case, the omnivores are going to fare better. So it's critical that the diet be defined. There's a lot of room for interpretation in what she's saying. But again, like I said, it's Harper's Bazaar, not the Lancet, not the New England Journal of Medicine. The other thing she says is also, I don't drink much, not more than a glass of wine. And that alone, that kind of, if that, if, if she was drinking, more than that in the past and changed over to a more restricted consumption of alcohol, well, that's gonna have a lot of health benefits and a lot of benefits for your skin. I have a video, which I'll link down below, on how alcohol is da damaging to the skin, namely excess alcohol consumption, binge drinking, and even what you might not think is excess alcohol consumption, it actually can end up leading to more skin aging, accelerated skin aging, as well as an onslaught of health impacts. So simply that statement alone, I don't drink much, not more than a glass of wine, that could have made the headlines. You know, not drinking changed her skin. In summary, yes, it is possible to appreciate some beneficial skin changes when you switch to a diet that is compliant with a vegan lifestyle, provided it is executed correctly. And so I suggest you educate yourself on what all that entails. I'm not going to tell you how to do that because that is not my area of expertise. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. On the next slide is going to be my last celebrity response video. You guys really seem to love these. And again, check the description box. I'll link some of my videos talking about different diets and their impact on skin. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.